welcome welcome i've i've hosted you many times in india but uh, this is very interesting uh, i think it is 6:15 in the morning 6:15 am in uh, michigan and i think uh, there is some storm there in your city uh, and pandemic all over the world and we are going to talk about or maybe uh, you are going to speak on a topic which is about leadership in uncertain times welcome you on board thank you thanks for that reminder well again good evening to everyone and thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of uh, your day today especially um, taking time out of all of your activities to spend this time with me it's truly my pleasure so when I had gotten this request from um, Dr. Ram to present today, I normally present in leadership. And so I stopped after I said yes instantly. And I thought, what am I going to say to this group of young um, future business leaders in, uh, in India and throughout the world? What am I going to say to you about leadership? in these unprecedented times. And I happen to be reading a book on World War II for a book club that I'm in. And my mind instantly went back to the book that I was reading and the different leaders and the different behaviors and, and skill sets that they had and what made them successful. And I thought to myself, are the skills that are required today any different than they were required back then in that unprecedented time. So I took that on as my challenge to go back through history, not just in the United States, but globally, particularly in India as well, and look at some of the leaders and what made them successful. And then would that apply in today's unprecedented time? So I looked at leaders such as Mahatma Gandhi, for example, who everyone in India knows and knows that he is um, known for, his, for India's liberation and for his peaceful civil disobedience. And I looked at the Dalai Lama and his background in religion and philo philosophy and his teachings in Buddhism that have spread globally. And then I came a little bit closer to home I looked at far more leaders than these, but I pared it down to this few. And I looked at Abraham Lincoln, who was the 16th president in the United States. And he was known for freeing slaves, for ending slavery in the United States. And Martin Luther King Jr., a civil rights activist in the United States with a background and leaning in Christianity, but also believe like Mahatma Gandhi did in peaceful civil disobedience. And then lastly, that I chose to look at um, and talk about today is Steve Jobs. He is widely credited, accredited with starting the personal computer revolution. I mean, who doesn't have one of these? Who doesn't have a smartphone today? Not only something that we can now talk on, which at one point was innovative enough, but we do business. Um, you know, we stay on top of our uh, social media on these things and we, you know, search the internet. Um, that was revolutionary and innovative in and of itself. But what do all of these leaders have in common that made them successful? There were six key competencies that I found that I felt set them apart and what made them successful in their unprecedented times. You see, they all had a vision. They all could picture what the future could be, what they could do to change the world, what they wanted it to be. They were innovative. They could see new ways of doing things. They had courage. They had the courage to be different, to stand up and speak out for what they believed in. They could communicate their message clearly. And they were decisive. They weren't afraid to take action. They weren't afraid to make decisions, even knowing that they might be unpopular at times. And then lastly, it's what I call interpersonal savvy. They were intelligent and knowledgeable, and they had the ability to build rapport with people from all walks of life. 
that would help them make their vision come to reality. So I thought it might be worth our, our time this morning to look at those six key competencies and see how they play out in today's unprecedented times. So if we start with vision, what is vision? It's a compelling picture. It's a strategy for the future. It's important to understand where we are today and where we've come from in our history. One, so we don't repeat our mistakes, but secondly, so that we build on those things that we have done and done well. It's knowing where we want to go and what contributions we want to make. It can be a month from now, as we see during these crisis times where we have to make quick decisions, but it can be years from now. What is that picture that we want to, to, to be? So early on in the corona pandemic, leaders began envisioning the need to work remotely as a way to keep their businesses afloat to stay alive, to stay in business. They also needed to do so because they needed to keep the economy growing. I don't, I would imagine the same is true in India, but in the United States, it's been very difficult because we need businesses um, to be working. We need people to be gainfully employed and making money so that we can keep our economy growing in the right direction, but most importantly, so that people can eat, they can have their livelihood. Another example, would be the automotive industry. It's traditionally a very um, traditional business and not necessarily um, open to change. It's been moving in that direction the past few years, but, the, but having to work remotely was a huge difference for them. And so they had to look at what, what implications will working remotely have on our culture? How do we make it worked to have different functions like engineering, design, manufacturing, quality, even human resources, working remotely, but yet needing to work interdependently. That was a huge um, vision stretch for them to look at. And then one that's near and dear to everybody, I think on this call, this webinar, is the education system. Administrators had to look at new ways of being able to teach students and to control the spread of the virus so that their, their staff and their students were safe. They had to look at basically a virtual education system. I know we've had online classes and in some cases we've actually had online degree programs, but never to this magnitude, never to the depth and the breadth that we're facing now. They basically had to look at a whole new infrastructure in terms of teaching. The second competency is innovation. Creating something new or a new way of doing something is the ability to innovate. So during a recent sluggish period in demand in India, India's textile and fashion industry began crafting a special niche for themselves in the fashion design face mask market. They knew that face masks were going to be around for quite a while. And why not take a market that's sluggish now and develop a new niche for them to be able to make masks that people actually want to wear, masks that represent people's personalities, that represent perhaps the work that people do, that match their clothing, for goodness sakes, and it's global. Or in the United States, several alcohol producers began converting production of spirits to hand sanitizer. There's a huge shortage, or there was, not only in the United States, but globally for hand sanitizers, and they were able to quickly use um, something that they currently use in their production and switch it to a new product that not only helped them stay in business, but also helped, the, helped society. And the next example is, is near and dear to me as a consultant, coach, guest speaker, is the ability to work electronically and remotely where normally I would come, as Dr. Ram can tell you, and do this presentation face to face. And so we had to come up, people in this field had to come up with new ways of working with clients, working with um, making presentations, obviously using new technology or using technology. So you see all walks of life have been impacted and need to innovate in order to succeed. 
Courage is the third competency. It's not the absence of fear, but rather our ability to overcome fear when we want something badly enough, when we're willing to take risks, when we really truly want to persevere at something. And we've had countless examples of courage during this pandemic. Doctors, nurses, um, police, fire have put themselves on the line every single day for the greater good. We've got grocery store employees who um, you know, are working during this whole pandemic. Volunteers have become the heroes of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, I'm sure these next, next examples are true in many different places, but I'm just going to cite a few. So in Poland, there are groups of people who are providing coffee and meals to physicians to keep them going during the day. In New York, Detroit, and other locations, they're packaging up food and delivering it to people who can no longer afford to buy their own food. In Australia, a bookstore is actually de delivering books by bicycle to very remote, isolated areas so that people in those areas can still read, can still learn, and even have something meaningful to do during these vast periods of isolation. So amid the suffering and the anxiety caused by this virus, volunteers across the globe are showing courage and resilience and helping those that are most vulnerable. Leaders come from all walks of life and courage comes from within. And I think we all have that courage. We just need to find it. Clarity is the fourth competency and it's the ability to see what needs to be done and then be able to communicate that need so that others understand what needs to be done as well. So for example, labs that have been developing and producing the COVID vaccine, or excuse me, the, the test kits, have not only the challenge to continue to produce and develop, but they are being challenged with making them more accurate. They're being challenged with making sure that they can produce more test kits, deliver those test kits quicker to those in need, and then once they get the results, deliver the results back quicker. It's been weeks in many cases to get the results back. You know, communicating with clarity is not just a nice thing to do in this day and age. It's really almost a matter of life and death in some cases. It's critical. Decisiveness is the fifth competency and it's being able to make quick decisions to react quickly to emergent issues. That's decisiveness. So the government in both India and the United States acted quickly and decisively to close their borders to other countries and even within their country to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Another example is General Motors and a company called Ventec Life Systems, which I don't believe they ever worked before, within two months worked in shuttered GM plants to build ventilators and distribute them so that no one that needed a ventilator would do without in the United States and then also globally. Those are both examples of organizations that make quick decisions and responded to emergency, emerging issues in a time of crisis. And then the last competency is interpersonal savvy. And it's the ability to build the rapport with colleagues, with um, superiors, with direct reports, with people at all levels. It's also demonstrating empathy actively listening and building effective teams. So with the number of COVID cases on the rise and hospital space at a premium, leaders needed to find different places where they could have remote hospitals. They needed to work not only with local hospital administrators, they had to work with national health organization. They had to work with local and national governments. They had to get, bring in facilities, et cetera, a number of different entities to not only identify, where can we put these hospitals? What equipment is needed? What's the infrastructure to make sure that this equipment is up and working and where it needs to be, when it needs to be there? That it's a safe place for healthcare workers to work and a clean and sterile place so that employees who are ill and seeking treatment 
and that employs individuals who are ill and seeking treatment can do so without further risk to themselves. Another example is the grocery store and supermarket industries. During this whole pandemic, they were considered um, critical, essential workers. We had to find a way to have our stores, not only in the United States, but globally, safe for, for customers to shop in and for workers to work in. And the ability to then um, stack the shelves when it was safe for those workers to do, and then try to bring in goods and services that we were not able to get because there were vast shortages. These examples are examples where it took people from all different walks of life to come together and to, to make sure they were meeting everyone's needs, but getting the job done in a very timely manner. And that takes interpersonal savvy to do. So the question that I asked here in my answer to my question are the competencies that made those famous leaders successful, the same competencies or skill sets required in today's unprecedented time? And my answer is a resounding yes. These are unprecedented times, but the companies requ competencies required to lead successfully remain constant. Leaders have to have a strategic vision. They need to be innovative. They need to communicate their vision with clarity and act decisively and possess interpersonal savvy and have courage to lead their companies into the future. Companies with an infinite mindset will survive. And those with a finite mindset, those companies that cannot envision a different world, a different way of doing business will not survive. The focus is on the future. What will we be? Not what are we today and what do we need to preserve? A couple of examples. The internet caused brick and mortar stores to fail. Video stores closed because of streaming. And Uber put taxi businesses out of work, or a number of them anyways, because they failed to see how they could do business differently. The world is changing. And we need to change in order to survive and thrive. So I have one last example, and it's a company that reinvented itself during this pandemic, a company whose leader had demonstrated these competencies that we've been talking about this morning. Kevin O'Leary of Kevin O'Leary Ventures and of Shark Tank, I'm not sure if you've heard of Shark Tank, invested in a small company that made suction cups. They saw a need for in-home stand-up desks during this pandemic, and the rest is history. And I quote, our window-mounted desk proved itself as the world's number one option for creating a healthy standing desk at home. Being able to mount a desk to glass or to a wall in five seconds at any height gave every worker the temporary minimalist office that they needed at home. But the company didn't stop there. They realized that as businesses began to open, they, were very, they had very limited options how to dispense gloves, masks, hand sanitizers to either employees or people coming into their businesses. They saw a need, and as the maker of the best suction cups on the planet, they devised a solution. So in record time, they developed a sleek glass mounted personal protection equipment station, perfect for any business. And when I say record time, they thought of the idea on Friday, they had the engineering done by Monday morning, put prototypes into production and had three different SKUs for sale the next week. They created a model for small businesses and small passageways. They had a medium-sized model for businesses, and they had a larger model for businesses, for building entryways and hospitals. This was a monument, monumental undertaking, and they actually did it working with um, their partners in a company called Q Design. And just like that, in three weeks, they went from a small enterprise to the world's number one work home accessory and the creator of the world's first window-mounted PPE station. You see, they'd grown, they had the ability to donate to those in need, 
and they feel very fortunate to be on this path and continue to find ways to help individuals and businesses during this time. What a ride that must have been. Can you imagine what that must feel like? It's like a dream come true to be able to do that in such a short amount of time. I'd like to share a quote from Kevin O'Leary. Making it through times like this requires unique resilience, innovation, and the ability to pivot according to demand. An example of how to look at work, how work gets done differently, and respond decisively with vision and courage to do something differently. I wanted to leave you with that powerful example because Kevin O'Leary, this leader, had a vision. It was innovative. He demonstrated the courage to do something differently, something he believed in, something he saw a niche for. He was able to share that message with clarity. He was definitely decisive um, to be able to make that decision in a week and be number one in three weeks. And he's in a personal savvy to not only work with his employees, but work with Q Designs to bring us all together. He didn't do it on his own. He did it with other people, but he, had, but he had the vision. He had the innovative idea and they moved with it. I'd like to lay down a challenge to each of you. I wanna challenge you to be that leader. You don't have to be at the top of a company or a Kevin O'Leary but you need to have a vision. You need to be able to see the future and see what you want that future to look like. You need to be able to be innovative. Look at things differently. What's a better way of doing something? And have the courage and the confidence in yourself to speak out about that, to share that message and do it with clarity so that everyone can understand and that people can get on board, people that need to support you mentally and physically and be decisive. Don't be afraid to take action and make decisions to help reach that vision. And use your interpersonal savvy to work effectively with others. You can use these competencies in whatever setting you find yourself in. You don't have to be in a company. Like I said, you don't have to be at the top of a company. Seek out those opportunities to polish those competencies do it now so you will be able to shine in the not so distant future when you'll be in the job market. Do it now so that you will be that leader. Thank you.